Electrolysis calculation is going to be the topic of this lesson. My name is Chad and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, in addition to high school and college science prep, we also do MCAT, DAT, and OAT prep as well. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description for where you can find those courses at chadsprep.com. Now, this lesson is part of my new general chemistry playlist. I'm releasing several lessons a week throughout the school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post one, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell notification. All right, so electrolysis calculations. These are generally a little bit of a pain in the butt. If you've had second semester physics or AP physics, uh, you might uh, find this a little bit easier than the average student, but the, I find the vast majority of students don't have the required prerequisite physics knowledge to kind of understand this from the get-go, and so this is gonna be new. Doesn't mean you can't learn it now, it just means it's gonna be a little harder. Um, however, what I find is that most students at the end of the day prefer just to memorize these two equations and apply them instead of memorizing kind of where they come from. Because uh, we're going to work out some math here, and again, if you have a certain level of, of physics 2 understanding, it'll make it easier. But at the end of the day, if you know how to plug and chug with these two equations, you're good. Now here's the word of the wise though. So a lot of you are given uh, an equation sheet for general chemistry and you're given all the equations and stuff like this. Well, uh, most of the time you're not gonna see an, either one of these equations showing up in a textbook and therefore probably not on your equation sheet. So if you do wanna use these two equations, it means you probably are memorizing them word of the wise. Now, if you understand how the calculation kind of works and where it comes from, then you don't need to memorize these. But again, that is going to require a certain level of understanding that'll be easier if you've already had second semester physics. So, and we're just going to learn this in the context of a problem here. And so uh, we're going to be doing electrolysis of manganese 2 chloride here. And the question says, how many moles of manganese will be formed if MnCl2 is electrolyzed for two hours using 10 amps? All right. So we got some issues here, but we're making manganese. Well, what oxidation state is manganese in to begin with here? Well, if we take a look, manganese here is going to be plus two, and that's important. And so we're talking about making elemental manganese. And so let's take a look at that half reaction. We've got manganese two plus, plus two electrons, goes to manganese. And so what we see here is that for every two moles of electrons transferred, we gain one mole of manganese. We're getting a ratio here between the moles of electrons and the moles of manganese. And it's two moles of electrons required to make one mole of manganese. Okay, not so bad. So if I told you I gave you 10 moles of electrons, well then how many moles of manganese would you get? Well, 10 moles of electrons, a two to one ratio would be a 10 to five ratio. So you'd get five moles of manganese. And that's not so bad. And ultimately that's what's at the center of this entire calculation is this ratio of moles of electrons to moles of product. So however, getting the moles of electrons is kind of the pain in the butt. Now here's the deal. I've got to talk about Faraday's constant for a second. So it turns out that one Faraday is equal to 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. So Faraday's constant, it's 96,500 coulombs per mole of electron. So, and I shouldn't have said one Faraday here, but that's what the uh, Faraday's constant equals. Now one Farad, we'd say, equals the charge on one mole of electrons. It's 96,500 coulombs. That's what I should better properly say here. So, so Faraday's constant gives you the charge per mole of electrons. So the charge on one mole of electrons. And so one Farad, it turns out is exactly that amount of charge in coulombs. So it turns out coulombs is the SI unit for charge. And it's exactly here, Faraday's constant, the exact amount of charge on a mole of electrons. So if I told you that I gave you 96,500 coulombs worth of electrons, then how many moles of manganese would I get? Well, again, two moles of manganese to get one mole, I'm sorry, two moles of electrons to get one mole of manganese. So if I gave you 96,500 coulombs, you'd have to be like, okay, that's one mole of electrons. And so one mole of electrons would only produce half a mole of manganese. And so now we're, we're getting a, a, another step removed here. Instead of telling you exactly how many moles of electrons you're getting, what I'm gonna give you is how many coulombs of charge instead. And once you know the coulombs of charge, you have this conversion that 96,500 coulombs equals the charge on one mole of electrons. So if I give you the coulombs, you can figure out the moles of electrons. So what if I told you I gave you 200,000 coulombs? Well, notice, let's approximate this. This is roughly 100,000 coulombs. So if I gave you 200,000 coulombs worth of electrons, well, that would correspond to roughly two moles of electrons. And two moles of electrons produces one mole of manganese. And we're getting there again. Well, here's the problem as well. 
In addition to not telling you the number of multiple electrons, we don't usually directly tell you how many coulombs we're giving you. What we do is we give you the current. So in the current in the wire is just electrons traveling through the wire. So instead of like, you know, water traveling down a river, we now have electrons traveling through the wire and that's called current. And it's measured in coulombs per second. So and it turns out that an amp here is a coulomb per second. And so when they're telling you that 10 amps of current are being supplied here, what they're really telling you is that 10 coulombs of charge is being supplied every second. So if it was being supplied for a total of two seconds, well, that'd be a total of 20 coulombs because it's 10 coulombs per second. If it was being supplied for three seconds, well, that'd be a total of 30 coulombs. And so what you end up doing is taking the total uh, amps here and multiplying by the number of seconds to get the total coulombs. And then once you know the total coulombs, you can use Faraday's constant here to figure out how many moles of electrons that is. And then once you know how many moles of electrons that is, you can use the appropriate half reaction to figure the relationship to moles of product being produced. So that's kind of where we're going here. And so uh, what you're typically gonna wanna do is start with the current. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with that 10 amps, which is 10 coulombs per second. And then multiply by the total number of seconds. Well, we've got two hours here. So one hour is 60 minutes. There's 60 seconds in each minute. So 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes per hour, 60 times 60 is 3,600 seconds in an hour. And so two hours would be 7,200 seconds. All right, that's gonna get us to the total number of coulombs. Well, how do I turn the total number of coulombs again into the, t the number of moles of electrons? Well, again, that's what Ab I'm sorry, that's what Avogadro is. That's what Faraday's constant tells me. And so in this case, we're going to multiply this by one mole of electrons over 96,500 coulombs. That'll cancel out now the coulombs and get us the number of moles of electrons. If we stopped here, we'd know how many moles of electrons we have. Well, again, I want to take this a step further because we want to know the number of moles of product, manganese in this case. And that's what that half reaction we wrote out was for. And so here we know that we get one mole of manganese for every two moles of electrons. It's a mole to mole ratio. And that's gonna cancel out the moles of electrons and leave us with moles of manganese, which is exactly what we're after. And ultimately what we've just derived with a little bit of understanding is this second equation that gives us the moles of product. So if you notice here, we had the current in amps, 10 coulombs per second in amps, times the time in seconds, 7,200 seconds, divided by Faraday's constants in the denominator, and then divided by the number of moles of electrons transferred in the half reaction. That's essentially this right here. It all multiplies out to equal the number of moles of product. In this case, the number of moles of manganese. We'll let our calculator do some work for us, but notice we can approximate this. So 10 times 7,200 is 72,000. And 72,000 would be like two thirds of a mole of electrons, two thirds of that 96,500. Well, two thirds of a mole of electron is only gonna produce one third of a mole of manganese. So this should come out somewhere around a third of a mole. All right, so 10 times 7,200 divided by 96,500 and divided by two. It gets us 0.37. moles of manganese. Now, what if the question had asked for the number of grams of manganese instead of the number of moles of manganese? Well, how do you convert moles to grams? You multiply by the molar mass or the molecular weight. And that's exactly the difference between this top equation and this one right here, is you end up multiplying one extra step by the molecular weight of the product, the molar mass of the product. So to get, instead of the moles of product, you get the grams of product, the mass of the product instead. That's the only difference. That's where this equation comes from. If, if we wanted grams instead, then we would have multiplied by the molecular weight of manganese right off the periodic table, but not where we're headed in this one. All right, let's do one more of these. So last question says, how long will it take to plate out 1.0 kilograms of aluminum from molten ALCl3 with a current of 100 amps? So now we're being asked to solve for time. So in this last one, we wanna get 1.0 kilograms of aluminum from aluminum chloride with a current of 100 amps. So that's where we're going. 
And again, we could reason this all out again as well, but I already know that most of you are just going to be trying to use one of these equations. So, and the question is, are you dealing with grams of product, mass of product, or are you dealing with moles of product? Well, in this one, we're dealing with one kilogram of product. So that's the mass of the product. And so it'd be this top equation we're going to be using. But in this case, we're not actually trying to get the mass of product. That's given. We're trying to figure out how long it takes. And we're going to be solving for that time in seconds. And so in this case, I'm just going to set it up right off that equation, pattern it right off there. So we'll start off with that 100 amps. And that's coulombs per second times the time in seconds, which we don't know, times the molecular weight of my product. Well, our product is aluminum. And it's got a molecular weight of 27, I'll write that a little bigger, 27 grams per mole. So, and then divide by the number of moles of electrons transferred. Well, we're starting with AlCl3, and aluminum is in the plus three oxidation state. We want to make elemental aluminum. And so the half reaction here, so Al3 plus plus three electrons goes to Al. And so it takes three moles of electrons to make one mole of aluminum. There's three moles of electrons being transferred. And that's what N here is. And then Faraday's constant, 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. And that all equals the mass of product in grams, though. And so instead of one kilogram, we're going to be making this 1,000 grams of aluminum. Cool. And from here, we're just going to solve for that time and it's going to come out in seconds. And so if you're taking a multiple choice test and the answers are in hours or minutes or whatever, you'll have to convert. But inherently, it's going to come out in seconds since amps is defined as coulombs per second. All right. So we'll take that thousand and a solve for T here, multiply by these two terms over. So we'll multiply times three times 96,500. And then we'll divide by these two terms. So divided by 100, I'll put the entire denominator here in parentheses. So divided by 100 times 27 and my parentheses, and we get 107,222, which I'm just going to round to 107,000. And that's in seconds. If we want to convert that to minutes, we would divide by 60. And we'd get 1,787 minutes. If we want to convert that to hours, we'd divide by another 60. And we'd get like 29.78 hours. If we want to convert that to days, we divide by another 24 and so on and so forth. You get the idea. Cool. So whether or not, again, you've had some physics and the, the, this understanding makes sense to you. And I think it's, you know, having a certain level of understanding is always kind of the best way to go. Because making things make sense is just an easier way to remember it and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I also recognize that many, many students struggle. And the vast majority of students I work with end up, again, just memorizing these two equations. And notice it was also really easy just to solve for the time here had we memorized these equations for this last example. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, a like and a comment letting me know are pretty much the best things you can do to support the channel. And if you're looking for general chemistry practice, then take a look at my general chemistry master course. It includes over 1,200 practice questions, also includes final exam rapid reviews and practice final exams. I'll leave a link in the description. Free trial is available. Happy studying.